So you want to catch the big one, right? Who doesn't want to catch big fish? It's what we spend our hard-earned free time to do, to catch the biggins. You finally hook into them and oh, the fish gets off and it's the ultimate gut punch. Don't worry about it. Johnny Fishlet will have you covered in this video where I'll show you the tips you need to know to not lose that big fish. And all right, so the number one mistake I see fish lots making is by far high sticking. So they hook into a good fish. They're all excited and they bring that rod way up high, way above their heads, almost at a perfect up and down 90 degree angle. This is a great way to work a fish off your hook and a great way to break your rod. So I wouldn't highly recommend it. Right there, don't get too high with the rod. No short pumps. Yeah, he has a crank on you going great. Well, there you have it. Now, what goes hand in hand with high sticking is this voracious pumping motion, this crazy up and down motion that people, I think, saw on ESPN sports fishing back in the day. And I think the reason why those people did that on TV was for ratings. It actually doesn't do anything for you when you're fish. Take a look at this guy. He is so violently pumping that rod and high sticking, there's virtually no tension on the line when he drops the rod. A matter of fact, when he pulls up a few times right here, the only way that he can maintain tension with the fish is by actually scooching back in the seat, which means he utterly lost control and utterly lost contact with the fish he's fighting. And this will serve as a great example right here of how to fight a fish without high sticking it and giving that fish all sorts of line to work with to work itself off. So that's 30 pound test line. We're black drum fishing. These are big fish. You can see that current and this rod will never reach more than 60 degrees at any given time while I fight the fish. And you can tell the tension on that rod the entire time. When I go down, it's controlled. When the fish is tugging, I'm letting it go. Right there, that fish is giving me a hard time, and I'm just letting the rod do the work. That's exactly how you should be fighting the fish. No reason to lift the rod way up. No reason to drop the rod violently down back and forth, it just doesn't do anything for you. And so high sticking and really violent non-strategic motions in your rod in order to catch a fish brings us to mistake number three, which is giving the fish way too much slack in your line. Once you give a fish slack in your line, that is literally the green light for the fish to get off the hook. Now, fish can do this in a number of different ways. It doesn't always have to be from high sticking. They could swim right towards you. They could jump out of the water, or if you're dealing with bigger fish, they could perform really violent head shakes all causing slack in the line and all causing the fish to get off and you having a really frustrating day now take a look at this poor kid right here he's high sticking this fish the sailfish is going to jump and look at the rod the rod has just so much slack in the line when the fish jumps that's why when a fish jumps out of the water they could often throw the hook here's another great example of it this guy's fighting the fish doing a really good job but then he's going to high stick it right here to get that fish in the net and boop and there goes the fish no more fish down goes the rod down goes the net and that's just just the way it goes when you give slack in the line the fish jumps fish does something it's going to get off let's see it here again yep there it goes and now this is a great example of what to do when a fish does give you violent head shakes does jump out of the water is swimming right at you and that is to reel straight through it that's the only thing to do you're not going to pump the fish while it's jumping or while it's head shaking you just reel straight through it and so here's anthony right here in a big 80 90 pound tuna and you're going to see that rod really violently start to shake that's a fish shaking its head you'll also hear tom in the background scream at anthony to reel through it anthony recovers very well from this fish and you can hear the encouragement from the captain after he recovers and gets that tension back on the tuna right good hand shake boy there you go and now this fish a lot set in the hook where the rod is actually above his head is a perfect segue into mistake number four, which is just ridiculous hook setting practices. Let me know in the comments below if any of you have done this, you know, the Bassmaster Classic, the build dance, set the hook so hard you're trying to rip that fish from wherever it is straight into the boat without actually having to fight it. So what happens here is a number of things. Hey, you set the hook so hard, you actually rip the hooks out of the fish's mouth before it has a chance to actually get a hold of the hooks or quite frankly you rip the hooks out of the fish's mouth literally where the hook is in the mouth and you injure the fish and it rips through the cartilage of the fish's mouth or thirdly what happens is you set the hook so hard that the fish comes flying out of the water or comes flying towards you 10 feet or so you know however hard you set it and you're giving that fish so much slack in the line immediately in the fight because you're just ripping it through the water towards you and then you have to reel down to catch up so here you go here's a great rendition of exactly what i'm talking about go ahead and leave me a comment below if you're guilty of doing 
doing this. It's pretty funny, actually. Doggy! Go get the doggy! Cross his eyes! And all right, so tip number five is very similarly related to tip number four, and that is your drag. Some fish lots out there set their drag way too tight, just like some fish lots out there set the hook way too hard and essentially you're going to have the same results. You could rip the hooks out of the fish's mouth with big fish. You could bend hook straight. You could break line, break your gear, you name it. It's just not great. So here's a general rule of thumb for appropriately setting your drag to the application of fishing and the gear that you're using. And that is you set your drag to about a quarter to a third of the overall breaking strength of your line. So if you have 10 pound test line, the ideal drag in most cases is three pounds of drag. There is no need to crank the drag up all the way to 20 pounds because that's what the reel is advertising. It just doesn't make any sense. When we go tuna fishing, we're trawling, we're typically using 80 pounds of test line. However, we never set the drag for more than 10 pounds because when that fish comes up and slams those lures going 60 miles per hour, you want the line to be able to go out, but you still want enough tension on the line in order to punch the hook through the fish. Using the appropriate amount of drag and pressure on your line is just so key to fighting big fish. And look, if you give yourself that leeway, let's say you're using 10 pound test line and you have three pounds of drag on that fish is getting you near some structure. Sure, crank it up to five or six pounds. You're still not gonna break your line and you're gonna have way more enough torque to bring that fish out of whatever structure you're worried about. So knowing all these great tips and tricks of how to catch the big fish once you hook it is a great starting point, but to really up your game, click on this end card right here where I get into the specifics of the gear you need for the right application of fishing and the right fish that you're after. So go ahead and check it out. I'll see you out there on the water.